This is Let's Talk Tribe, the official Let's Go Tribe podcast, episode 98. I am your host, Matt Lyons, and on this week's episode, Josh Donaldson is officially a member of the Indians. What does that mean for Jason Kipnis, Jose Ramirez, and the rest of the roster? We got our first glimpse of Eric Haas the other night. Could that be the future at catcher for the Indians? If not, they might be a little bit in a little bit of trouble behind the dish. And Jose Ramirez and Francisco Lindor are struggling right now. Does it matter? Will it continue? Joining me for all that and more, as always, is none other than Mr. Merritt Rolfing. Merritt, how you doing? I think I'm fine. I'm still <laughs> Let me tell you why I hate MLB TV. No, I have um I have many bones <laughs> to pick with either my internet service provider or else MLB TV itself. But they have the worst customer service. I spent two and a half days complaining to them on Twitter about this. And like it's the only way I I have to contact them. So you just have to DM them with them for hours. And you want telling you to reinstall. Anyway, I'm fine. No, if you're on, that's all they tell you on desktop. I had, I had troubles for years, and all they would say is, if you're on mobile, do you have add-ons installed? You should uninstall those. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was that was what I, I it was my problem with my PlayStation Four. And it was like, download it again, okay? Download it again, all right? Reset your <laughs> your PlayStation to uh, the what do you call the you know the the, the factory settings, okay? <laughs> they had you reset your entire PS Four. Yeah, like the whole. And this, this was over a period of like four days. And then I, anyway, I, later I found out that it may, in fact, be uh, Verizon throttling my, um, uh, what do you call, my internet MLB TV for some reason. Apparently, it's a thing other people, a problem other people have. So instead, I hate that. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad this year because I used to, I don't, I don't have any problems with them. I miss yelling at them all the time, but it's been really great for me this year, and it's a weird feeling. This is the, literally the first time I've ever had a problem with them. <laughs> <laughs> well they well, recently switched to html5 which helped a lot of things i think that's why they didn't have very many features at the beginning of the year but for the most part that solved like a million of their issues except for I, you apparently because you have it. it's, it's only gotten worse in the last like three weeks it's very infuriating so <laughs> speaking of getting worse in the last three weeks how about those indians um we just watched a nice a nice game against the royals where it wasn't nice at all francisco lindor homer late but uh they did get some help, hopefully, in the form of Josh Donaldson on Friday night. Um, they acquired him for a player to be named later. They acquired him right before. Um, I mean, the, the trade was confirmed around eight, but I think it wasn't until like midnight where it was officially official. So they were really close to the the uh, what do you call that cutoff, if you will? What is that thing called? The waiver wire deadline. The waiver That's the wire one. deadline. Yes. <laughs> they got him for a player to be named later, um, which is rumored, by the way, to be Julian Merriweather, who is kind of. You can call him a fringiest prospect. He hasn't pitched in 2018. He's recovering from Tommy John surgery. So if that's all they're giving up for him in the end, I'm really okay with that. Um, but Donaldson well, himself, if nobody's heard of him, hasn't played for a little while. What was that? Wasn't Merriweather supposed to be like a – I don't know. I remember in, in the midst of my many complaints about the bullpen throughout the season, you know, and, and, the, and remember I think I wrote an article a while back about their inability to produce power arms out of the bullpen. Um, he was supposed to be some sort of – some sort of thing like that this year, but instead he got Tommy John surgery. And so that really put a damper on, on the hopes and dreams of the bullpen. I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering that, but I thought he was, he, he might be good later. Is what I'm saying. He's one of those players where like, if you watch the Indian system, you get super excited about him, but to literally anybody else, you've probably never heard of him. And then probably doesn't matter. True. It's, I mean, he's old for triple a at this point. He was last year too. So, I don't know. I I, th- I was excited for him at one point, but again, I think it's one of those things where when you really follow the Indian system all the way up through, he he had some exciting seasons. He he did look like he could be a solid bullpen arm eventually, but even if he does turn into a great reliever, if Josh Donaldson is anything close to Josh Donaldson, they can have him. Like <laughs> I can't think of a single prospect where if they, heaven forbid, win the World Series with Josh Donaldson, I don't care who they would trade if he's a big part of it. No, I mean, I agree um, with you. And plus with yeah. relief arms too, I don't know. It's It's that's one of the few positions where you can say to yourself, oh, he's too old now. Because, you know, we see guys come out of nowhere to become good relief arms suddenly at age what have you because they figure something out. And generally you're only going to get a, you know, a good, what, three or four years out of most relief pitchers anyway. So I'm sure they'll find another one maybe or not. I don't know. <laughs> they do have Nick Sandlin, who's, uh, who didn't come up this year, but – he was rocking. He was drafted this year, and he already made it. To, I think like double A. So th- next year we'll probably see what will that be like. The first great Indians reliever in the first great developed Indians reliever in since like Cody Allen, Brian Cody Shaw, Allen, maybe. Probably, yeah. Brian Shaw not even developed. I mean, he was traded. Oh, that's for, right. He was traded over with yeah. uh, with Bowers. No, yeah, I would say probably Brian Shaw, and then before him, I don't know what one of the Raphaels back in the two thousands or something like that. They were pretty good for a couple of years, right? 
I mean, there was that point where we thought the bullpen mafia was good. That was those were the days, <laughs> man. That? Those were the days, man. <laughs> Benny Pestano and Chris Perez and Joe Smith. I really liked those those three. They were fun. Well, and because the, they were pretty good in a team that was really not good. Like that 2012 team was Justin Masters in a pile of garbage in the bullpen or in the rotation, <laughs> and then the bullpen mafia. So at least you get a sense of security lurking in the seventh inning, I suppose. Yeah. Oof. And getting back to Donaldson, um, so he hasn't played since June first with a calf injury. Um, he had a, he had an injury before that, which was April thirteenth with his shoulder. So needless to say, he's been a little bounced around this season. Um, it's another thing I think, like Brantley, where it's not the same injury um, over and over, so that kind of alleviates maybe some of the worry. Mm-hmm. But he has had several injuries. But he's in on a rehab start. The Indians after they acquired him, they sent right back down to AAA for to play at the Clippers. I think in the playoffs, they're still. They're still in the playoffs. They at least have a couple games. If he plays after that, he'll have to go to double A. Um, but he homered. He had a grand slam tonight, and he homered um, with whatever the Blue Jays affiliate is a couple nights ago. So he still has the power somewhere in there. I mean, it's against minor league pitching, but um, I'm pretty excited about the idea of him coming over, playing somewhere in the field. But uh, what are your general thoughts on just the Josh Donaldson trade and getting him this close to a potential playoff run? If you're on a triple A team and you're in the playoffs – and suddenly the other team gets Josh Donaldson. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Like, I, I know you're the minors and you recognize this as like a, you know, a, a thing that can happen. But if you're one of those guys that's been on the team for most of the year and like, you know, you, you've, you've built some camaraderie and you feel good about winning the inter- international league, even if it's a thing no one will talk about in six weeks, it matters to you a little bit. How does that make you feel? I don't that, That's when I saw you hit, hit, hit that grand slam, just that he was going to be going to the, you know, there, and then he's going to go to Akron for when they're in the playoffs. Like, I don't know. I, I, I always, I always think about things like that because. Well, and, and imagine like being a player in his early thirties who spent a lot of time in AAA, mm-hmm. and like this is your big thing. And meanwhile, they need to just dumping players down there to rehab in your playoff. Right, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, there's got to like, be some kind of a, uh, sense of, <laughs> kind of yeah, like, like, like you recognize the situation you're in. Like it's a developmental league. But at the same time, like you said, there's these guys who who do toil there for day, years and years and years, who have some you know sense of you know being invested in the in the success of the Clippers or the Rubber Ducks or the you know the what have you, which is probably the name of a minor league team somewhere with the names they have. If it's not now, it will be in a couple of years. The what have yous, give it time. Yeah, the the, the who's it's the the, the, the the what's that's you know any, any of those teams they're all, they're all in the Pacific Coast League. Um. I mean, it's a great trade. I mean, I think it's. I mean, if Julian Merriweather is good, maybe down the line we'll go. Huh, oh, that kind of stinks. But again, it's a relief arm for a guy who who you hope turns back into form. What is it with calf injuries in the Indians these days, huh? <laughs> Even when they don't have them, they acquire yeah, them. They just want one. more yeah. calf injuries. How does that? <laughs> I, what is the calf injury too? Because like, I'm not that athletic. I I go to the gym. I don't think I've ever injured. <laughs> You know, I've played pickup basketball before. What, 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 what? <laughs> I'm basically an athlete. You know, it's not that hard. I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy weekend warrior. This weekend I did nothing. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's Labor Day weekend. I'm not supposed to do labor. Um, <laughs> What are these calf injuries? Oh, that, 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 the, the things with uh, Chisinau in particular made me think about this, too. Like, what is wrong with it? Is it just very tender? Is it an Achilles thing? Is it a muscle pain? Is it tendon anyway i don't know that, that that's that's neither here nor there it's a great trade though i think because i mean and i tweeted about this as soon as it came through right now if he continues to hit the way he has this year which is not great by any stretch of the imagination he's still the fifth best hitter on the indians with a 109 ops plus or wrc one of the two um he's still getting on base and he's demonstrating he can hit for power every now and again if he turns back into form then he's the Second best, second best hitter on the Indians, uh, and also he's a he's maybe the the best you know defensive third baseman on the Indians. I mean, I mean Jose Ramirez is fantastic. It's funny that they got this player to ostensibly replace literally the best Indians player on the field right now, um, and, and make making of all of all people to t- tell them to move out of position for the rest for, for the stretch run. It's your MV, your you know your leading MVP candidate, but. I mean, whatever, man. What, like you said, whatever it takes to win, you know, it's 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 worth Julian Merriweather and and it's worth Jason Kipnis being a little bit unhappy for the next six weeks, and it's worth Jose Ramirez complaining a little bit. I mean, they also want to win a championship, and they're on the team. I mean, 
th- this is the, one of the reasons they have Terry Francona is to smooth over, you know, hiccups like this. So if it all works out, awesome. If it sort of works out, still, again, awesome because they need a little more length in that lineup. Right now it's, like, he, he, like I said, he steps in better than Yonder Alonso in most right stats and right behind Ed, Edwin Encarnacion. So, yeah, no, fine. I mean, great. I, if, will it? Will it, you know, drive Jason Kipnis to perform better? I don't know. Maybe. That'd be, that'd be really nice. I mean, he did it Homer like the night that he learned it in a pinch hit situation. That was nice. And I don't think we've heard, we've sort of heard that Jose, all he said is he doesn't want to be bounced around, which is completely understandable. He's a third baseman. He wants to either, he wants to be something and stay as, I think he'd probably be a better second baseman just because how athletic he is. But um, cool. I think understandably also Kipnis is the only one who's, uh, Terry Francona said he didn't jump for joy, which I assume if, what we're getting is a lot less than actually happened. So maybe he wasn't too thrilled, which I get. He just felt like he was finally recovering. He had the whole magazine thing. He got his hands set right, and now he's replaced. But I do hope on some level Kipnis understands that you've been really bad for a long time. You've gotten good lately, but there's such a track record. And he's Josh Donaldson. Like he, Kipnis even said it in his own um, words after the trade happened. Then he understands you can't mess around now going into the playoffs. you got to get somebody like Donaldson and use him. I don't know how much he believes that. Um, compared to how much he'd rather play, but um, I think there's there was also uh, was it Friday or Saturday? No, it wasn't Saturday because it was on Fox um, FS1. FS1. Yeah. But they were uh, Ken Rosenthal was talking about his playing time. Like they do their in the dugout right next reports. It's always seemed kind of dumb, <laughs> right? Yeah, and he was just saying he's going to lose playing time in the playoffs. To Kip, you could hear in the background saying, "We'll see." <laughs> <laughs> he did not look happy when they showed him the no, camera. No. Like that, I don't know if he was joking or. <laughs> I imagine if you're a player, that can't be nice having the guy right behind you talking about you losing your job. No, exactly, but, because usually they're saying you know inane nothings about this or that other thing, but this is literally talking about yeah, no, he's going to definitely not play anymore. He's done now. His his, his career. <laughs> this guy right here, the one I'm pointing and, at, and he's gone. Career over, <laughs> finished. He's a AAA player at best now. But I mean, that's the question: though. what do you do with him now? Because center. And I field, want to jump ahead a little bit. Like center field, oh, I prefer to have Greg Allen there at this point. Or, oh yeah, that's the other thing. Like, where does Kipnis play? Yeah. Because Greg Allen has shown he's pretty okay. And then I guess is Rajai Davis kind of the odd man out if they're gonna? I can't imagine Kipnis is gone, right? If if anybody, it's got to be Davis. I mean, even though I mean, just I mean, just if we're if we're gonna know. stick to the old you know the old Tito's guys thing, Kipnis is a hundred percent on the on the playoff roster. Uh, where you use him, I don't know. I would assume it'd be you know, but I th- I think Davis is gonna make it too, though, because he'd be a good like pinch runner guy kind of a thing. I guess you can you can make changes in between rounds too, I suppose. So you could bring Davis back yeah. on when it's the World Wait, Series. Can you? Yeah, you can, yeah, definitely. They've done oh, that. Yeah, it's not like you just set your roster at the beginning of the year. You can you can change it every round. Can't you? What? I'm ninety percent sure no. you can change it between every round. Between your forty man roster, you mean? Well, yeah, you I that's what I'm assuming. You can pull guys off the off the forty man. I don't know. I guess that'd be interesting to do. I don't. Can you? I guess I've never paid attention. I, I don't know. If you can, that's completely new information to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like ninety. I don't know. Maybe you can. You can. And I, I'd Google it, but I don't want to disrupt the recording and the sound with it. I'll just do it anyway. I don't. I guess that depends where. Um. I guess that depends. Like, if you can decide if Kipnis is better in some stadium or something, you use him over Rajai Davis, or if. I mean, pitcher versus player matchups don't mean a ton, but if he's had a lot of success against a couple of pitchers, maybe you put him in and then switch him out for Rajai Davis the next round. Um, unless you just made all that up, I'm not sure. But either way, <laughs> if you didn't, that'd be uh, that's an interesting yeah, thing to go yeah. with there. But if not, I think it's like according to this August what? 30th article from Bless You Boys, the SB Nation, uh, our sister site over there. Blah blah blah. Where did it say you can? <laughs> I just saw it. And so you can, in other words, you can replace an injured player with another player. Well, I, I don't need that. I need. Oh other. no! So that's no, that's no, no, the no, thing. No, I shut up! Shut up! Okay. I, I saw <laughs> you keep digging, Marin. I'm sure it's there somewhere. I will be proven <laughs> right here. I don't even care. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know if 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 not, I mean, then who gets left out? Like Yandy Diaz is gone, right? He, I don't think he's on the playoff roster. I mean, I, and as far as like the Tito's guys thing with Kipnis, that's one where I don't completely disagree with because he's not he's not absolutely terrible mm-hmm. and i think that's one of the cases where it's okay keeping a veteran around because you want to show because one of the things tito's best at is like you said smoothing things over and how he treats players and how they respond to him so i think the fact of not just dumping a guy who's been there so long and through so much maybe helps something with the clubhouse but i don't know we don't know in the clubhouse obviously but i don't mind keeping kipness around if it's for like a bench or 
some kind of outfield situation because at this point he's not going to keep playing time from Josh Donaldson. There's no way that's going to happen if he's back. So the only real reason I was against Kipnis for the longest time is because I wanted Yandy Diaz in there, but we're clearly past that point now. It's Josh Donaldson third base, Jose Ramirez second, which I'm I am slightly okay with <laughs> if Josh Donaldson is healthy. Um, and then to jump ahead a little bit um, to our questions, because this is an interesting thing to think about. At will be twenty three on Twitter. He wanted to know where would you rank Donaldson among all time Indians. I think he's going off the joke of calling Josh Donaldson Indians legend before he's played a game. He's but... MVP. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, like, assuming he does something huge in the playoffs or World Series, that's got to rocket him up, right? Despite the fact that he's been here for like a month, I have a very inflated view of Rajai Davis because one swing in October, oh yeah, no, November, I mean, whatever that was. And uh, what what is greatness? But I, I mean, it's is, is it how you etch yourself into history? I suppose. And so that definitely does move Roger Davis up ahead of, I don't know, a lot of guys who failed in different ways in one way or another. I mean, you could almost, if, if that was your sole definition, you're going to start putting him ahead of like, um, I don't know, Herb Score or something like that. Although he's kind of a historical guy too. Uh, Sam McDowell never really, he was a great individual player, but he never really, you know, they never really, he never had any big moments because the team stunk around him. So, yeah, no, I mean, if, if, if Donaldson comes here and then wins the World Series and is a central piece in that. And I've been trying to to, cal- to figure out how to calculate what the, what an offensive player's version of what Verlander did for the, the Astros last year would be. It's still confusing to me, so I'm not really sure what, what that would look like. You tell me. I mean, it's, it's just one or two hits, right? That's all they really. That's all the trade is for. They're not trading him for right the regular season. They're not trading him for some first inning at bat in Game One. They're trading him to do. Like I said, I made a post that he basically does need to be Kyle Schwarber, who was injured all year long. He came back for like six games in the World Series and demolished the Indians. Yeah. Um, I mean, mainly I, that one game. I think the hope, obviously, is that That's he has like a you know a, a David Ortiz twenty thirteen or a Hideki Matsui and what was that two thousand nine? I think when he just went absolutely bonkers and and you know, yeah, there's definitely a lot of good precedent for doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Just you get the guy in October, and then if you can do that, the rest doesn't matter no, at all. Exactly. Really. I mean, you can have the worst. And, and again, like that, that's why they always say legends are, well, they, I don't know who they are, but you know, the, the, there's that saying, legends are born in October, because you can, I mean, I'd say two-thirds of David Eckstein's career are built around running out a couple like bunt hits and stuff in October and, and, and being in key places at key times, you know? Or right. most of the, the 2015 Royals. Everything they did throughout October was just like perfect timing, basically, so... Which is really unfortunate because, goddamn, I hate that that happens still. <laughs> this is also a good time to plug the fact that um, for a few years ago, before I even took over, Let's Go Tribe did a top 100 Indians of all time. That is a great way to eat up time in the offseason, and I'm really mad they did it because now I can't do it. What do you mean? We can update it now. <laughs> How many years ago was it? I mean, How many updates is there really going to well, be, though? Kluber is <laughs> like, probably a top four pitcher now. Yeah. Three or I guess four. We could. I mean, at I'm this the... point, he's probably jumped ahead of McDowell. I, I would put him above, above Sam McDowell. I mean, he's, at this point, he's probably behind who? who? Uh, Feller and who else? You know? Wait, let's make it. Let's do an impromptu topic right here. Talk for a second. I'm going to go find that. All right, cool. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, <laughs> Eric Haas? How's he's doing? All right, I'll be honest with you. Because of MLB, <laughs> MLB TV, I did not see that game, and I was very frustrated the entire time. <laughs> Well, the worst thing about customer service on Twitter is you have to be on Twitter while you're doing it. So you're just, tw- oh my God, I am going to. But now I found out Verizon throttling me. And here's the problem with net neutrality, which again is a term I'm not sure which side I'm on anymore. Because it seems like the term net neutrality has been co-opted by the evil people. And when you- So anyway, we're back now. I found the line index. <laughs> it's um, An evil generally right, so, I mean, is relative. Gonna- but in this case, I feel like that was trying to stifle creativity and the spread of free knowledge are in fact evil. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> now, I guess you're right. We could definitely update this. This is from 2014. So this is before the current run of players. Um, and I mean, the top 10, does Lindor, Lindor probably doesn't squeak in there yet. Even Kluber no, probably doesn't. I mean, and that's the thing. I'm just saying he's a top 10 since I was going to say Ramirez, quite honestly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jose Ramirez yeah, has not been, even has been a better player, I think. Well, no, I mean, just in terms of numbers than Lindor has been the last two years. And that is the yeah. sample size we have of their careers. So, what does that tell That's at least got to jump quite a few spots up. I feel like we could at least, at least redo like the bottom 50. Because I don't think any current player jumps past that, right? Even Kluber? I think, I, I think Kluber does. I think at this point, Kluber may be edging towards a top 
15 or 20 role in the Indians pantheon. Definitely. I mean, come on. He's got two Cy Youngs. He's, um, he's been one of the two or three most dominant pitchers and they haven't had a pitcher this good since probably honestly, Sam McDowell, like that, in terms of his overall dominance of the league, like that, that, that that's the real, very real situation here. CC Zabathia was very good. Um, Cliffley was good for a year. Uh, they, they traded her, or Bartolo Colon, known in the nineties was all that good. You know, Charlie Nagy was there, was their young, you know, the, the young guy who was good, but he was not that good. And really he was pretty good, but it was hard to be good. Then. Yeah, no, it's interesting for sure. I mean, does, I guess there's no position Michael Brantley, maybe I think he was on that list. Cause that was 2014, Ooh, Brantley, um, but he's gotta be somewhere up there just yeah, based on length of time and being pretty, really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another one where it's like in the bottom 50 kind of thing. Yeah, he, he'd sneak into the bottom Man, a hundred good players. Of the Indians. I don't have time. I don't, I don't have time for that. It's really, I should every once in a while, I, I need to bump that and like put it at the top. Cause they put in a lot of work and that it was a really good list. Yeah, of, I'm running out of gas after about 30. probably. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say Josh Donaldson just goes bananas in the playoffs, hits a game winning world series home run. Does he crack the top 100 based yeah, on that? Probably. I mean, again, you know, he, he etches himself into the, you know, the fabric of the Indians history and he, breaks what is now the longest, you know, the longest drought in World Series history, and he brings a championship to a town that hasn't had a championship in, what, two years now? That's too long. That's all too yeah. long. So, um, I mean, Jake Wick Westbrook is number 87 on this list. I think a couple good at-bats passes that. Uh, Jose Mesa, 78. Man, um, list. I mean, it's not a terrible list. It's just trying to dig through so many good players is really hard. No, that's the thing, too. Like, what do you do about players from the – like – you know, like, like the, the teams in the there were players in the fifties that were pretty good. You know, I mean, I would say that honestly that a lot of the roster from like the fifty four World Series, the forty eight World Series, are probably in the top twenty five or thirty. In fact, the twenty five top twenty five or thirty are probably the mid nineties, uh, t- some time around the, the forty, you know, the nineteen fifty, and then you know a couple guys from now, but. Having a huge, hideous Sorry. drought for <laughs> where the team was not just not that good, <laughs> but the worst, and in fact, a historical joke of how bad they were, really tamps down the ability to find a top 100 pl- list of players that are any good. <laughs> like, you're going to be getting yeah. some real league average dude. Like, again, Jake Westbrook at 84 is hilarious to me. Yeah, and I think the fact that that, that major league, I, I assume that's what you mean by the, the yes. joke of being so bad. Like, the fact that that could be made and people still loved it, that tells you how bad the Indians were. I don't think you could make a movie today about any team. Cause like who or especially a baseball team, you could limit it to that, but there's like no team that's been bad enough, long enough that it's accepted and you could just make a movie about it and they'd still love it. Right. Like they, they don't make, you know, they don't I make shitty sports about. movies like that anymore, which is sad. Yeah. That is part of it. Um, but, but like you said, who would you make it? About? You can, a couple years ago, you could have made it about the pirates, but then they got to the playoffs. Um, I thought it was funny when they made Mr. 3000. I think that's probably the last gasp of the great, you know, crappy sports movies where the goal the Brewers had in that was to compete for third. Um, but yeah, like you'd, you'd either have to pick a team that's just kind of random and vague, like how the, the there was a TV show about the pitcher. Um, oh, yeah. It was called Pitch. Was that what it was called? Oh. Yeah. Are you talking about the one with, um, with the girl? With the woman? Oh, yeah. And, that, and yeah. that was the Padres. So it would have to be like a Padres or oh, the, the Mariners, actually. I think the Mariners are now the team you could you could make a movie about, about them being a downtrodden team and suddenly succeeding because they have a hardcore fan base. I guess. No one really rem- but they're like a- No one's really sure they ever play baseball. They haven't made the playoffs <laughs> in a long, long time. And they have they have an interesting history. Um, you could have, you know, you could have guys come in and guest star, you know, you could have a, a cameo of Ken Griffey or Randy Johnson or A-Rod or, you know, whoever, you know, Dave Kingman. Um, you know what I feel like you could do with the Mariners? You could do like an office parks and rec kind of movie with them or a TV show. Expand on that. Like, you, <laughs> like, uh, like I imagine Ken Griffey Jr. for so when you said him, I pictured like a parks and rec, like zoom in thing on him. Like when he comes in the door, okay. like you could have a quirky <laughs> fake documentary thing about it. 
because they're just a goofy team. They're not terrible. I mean, they've had Felix Hernandez. They always seem to have like one great player. Yeah, they're, 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 it was Ken Goofy Jr., then it was Ichiro, then it was King Felix. Now it's always inches away from being a contender. Like they're an 85 win right. team. Like it seems like with regularity, but there's always some dominant, like either the A. But I guess that is the closest to the that terrible Indians team now, right? Well, I mean, and I'm, I'm just trying to think of a team that, all, that not only that, but has character that, that makes sense. Again, like it would have to be a team like the Brewers, which they did with uh, Mr. 3000, or. The Rockies, I guess, are a good choice. One of those vague teams people know exist, but they don't ever really get any attention, which is what the Indians sort of had, but they're, the only hints that they had were they're very bad. Um, right. The Brewers have kind of a nondescript uniform. The Rockies wear purple, which pops on the screen, so that helps with the cinematic aspect. Um, the White Sox? No, nah, there's uh, too much shittiness surrounding them. And... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... I like the idea of making a quirky show or movie around the Mariners. That's probably your best bet. Just because you can't mercilessly make fun of anybody like you did the Indians back then anymore. That's the the biggest thing. Yeah. Everybody's so close to being good now. I guess. but you. I think everybody takes baseball like sports too seriously. Like you had the pitch was a super serious movie. All the movies now, like there's no more dumb sports movies. Well, like that's you said, what I'm saying. Point. All these idiotic, you know, and, and the mid-90s were rife with these. After Major League, you know, Angels in the Outfield. You had Angels in the Outfield 2, still flapping. You had Angels in the Outfield 3. That's just, why are we Such making stupid. this movie? Uh, uh, I think the last legitimately stupid sports movie was like Benchwarmers, right? And that was hardly And that wasn't that wasn't pro related. sports. That's why I'm thinking Mr. 3000 right. might be the last pro, at least baseball related. Oh, yeah. I just, I just remember Rookie of the Year and also what was the companion piece to that? Um, uh, what was the one where the kid ended up owning the Twins? Oh, man. Oh, uh, the the writer Maja of Twinkie Town is going to hate us for not knowing this because she loves that movie and she always tweets about it. It's a, I was watching it not too long ago too. I can't think of what it's called. I'm glad she's listening to this podcast. <laughs> movie where she <laughs> owns the twins, <laughs> Little Big League. Yeah, what is that? There you go. That's yeah, the okay. one. Okay, yeah, you know, um, Bad News Bears. I guess Mr. Baseball came out in '92. Major League Two, of course. Major League Three. No one watched this movie. Uh, so I guess the other thing is just people, like teams, okay. don't want their their brand in that that light anymore, right? Like they don't want to be the goofy bad movie franchise. Well, that's why I'm wondering if like the Marin. I don't know. I, mean, I, I think we both just have this weird view of. At least I have this weird view of the Mariners as being this quirky little thing because they play again out on the West Coast, always at ten at night. So I barely have a, have a chance to even see the game, let alone know what's going on or who's on the team half the time. So yeah. I, I, I'm I'm not entirely sure Nelson Cruz is still playing baseball, but I check his, I check the <laughs> box and I'm like, damn, he's gonna hit 40 home runs again this year. No one no one gives me more hope for old sluggers than Nelson Cruz. I mean, granted, yes, he got popped for our old friend steroids, but still, I mean, other than that little thing, whatever. Everyone gets popped <laughs> for steroids every now and again. Sometimes it's steroids of the body. Sometimes it's steroids of the heart. So. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, and there's the episode title. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just add a note in um, uh, Zencaster here. But I mean, in all reality, he's having an incredible year, and I'm like, why can't Edwin Edwin Carnes, you know, and also have a you know, at age 37, 263, 346, 531 slash line in one of the hardest to hit a home run parks in the majors too, you know, and playing another yeah. nine or ten games or wherever down in um. Oakland as well doesn't really help. Anyway, um, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, bad <laughs> bad movies. Uh, that's what I was talking about. I've been half trying to read this article on postseason rosters for the last ten minutes, but I keep on getting distracted. And I'm pretty sure well, you're doing a podcast right now, Merritt. Did you first years are set at the beginning <laughs> of the series, and no changes to the 25 man active roster are allowed except when a player is injured. So they're set at the beginning so of the series. So yeah, that's all. Oh, so you can do it in between. Yes, then. exactly. Oh, That's why it was so crazy. Wow, I did not, know not that. making the roster. Well, not crazy, but in retrospect, it seemed to get crazy. <laughs> so does this not happen often? Do I watch baseball? Have I seen I this know. game well, before? That's the thing. The the, the players who <laughs> this is like mind blowing. I mean, especially when it when it comes to well, we watch the AL too. So I mean, the half the time yeah, the yeah. the lineup card is photocopied. You know. So there's no yeah, and I guess if you don't have any more than twenty four great players anyway, twenty five. Right, like it's the it's the pro, like it's 
it's the the playoffs. You're not going to put in your backup catcher or give an off, you know, give a rest day to your star shortstop or something like that. So that's why we don't see the the moving around very much. And like you're not going to so not have play. your your amazing young star if you're competing for a World Series. Yeah, maybe. So getting back to what's happening and now in baseball, besides old movies that we both kind of love <laughs> that can't be made anymore, which sucks. I think they can still be made. Um, if, these, if, the, <laughs> if Major League Baseball wants to get back in the good graces of the of the, of the average American man or person. Human, the millennials. The millennials. They'll, they'll make millennials. more shitty movies. <laughs> I mean, based on Jose Lynn Francisco, or wow, that Jose was, Lynn that was a name. Jose Lynn yes. <laughs> Jose Ramirez and Francisco Lindor's past couple weeks. Maybe they can make something out of that. Just ignore the rest of the season. Um, Cause those two have been really bad. I was looking at this Jose day. Ramirez is still walking. <laughs> I know last 14 days, Jose Ramirez eight for 49, no home runs. Lindor 14 for 61 with a home run. Oh, you tell by those numbers that Jose still walks quite a bit. I but, mean, just to use the, I mean, the, the lazy cutoff of August. Ramirez is hitting 250, 374, 450, which is pretty good. But, like, if you want to be mean to him and take out a series where he beat the tar out of the, out of the, um, what's that? Baseball? Thing? All of baseball, <laughs> but also, but more specifically, the Reds. Like, he, you know, he was what? He was six for 14, uh, a few home runs. Like, he just, you know, he, he erupted in that he, three home runs in the three game uh, in a, in a, uh, Three games with a home run in a row. Just had a great couple of days, but he's been very terrible. And Lindor is just slugging below 400 for the entire month of April or August, rather, and into September now. And and he finally homered today, at least. Yeah. So that's something. I don't know if, it, if they're just. I, I remember watching the um, the Boston series back when my um, ability to watch baseball still existed. A <laughs> series where uh, he hit. Let me see. Uh, Ramirez was, was that one hit? No, he was two for 14, uh, with a double and two walks and struck out three times as well. Uh, he was utterly dreadful. And I, their team seemed at times where he was just pressing a whole lot. You know, I, I don't know if he was, if it was just bad luck, if he just was missing the ball by a little bit. Because that's the thing too. You, it's so, you know, it, the, the margin of error in this game is, ridiculously small so i don't know if you just maybe this is one of his we've seen him go through slumps like this before but the, the fact that both of them are doing it at the same time is that's i'm not going to call it troubling yet because again it's the beginning of september not the middle of a series in october like like what happened last year um it's just irritating i guess and it, that's yeah. yeah that did happen in the playoffs and yeah, i remember that now i blocked all that out mentally but yeah. that's what it was is those two just like died in the ALDS. Lindor hit a hit a, hit like a grand slam or something in game one and then after that it was just gone like that was it that was the extent of his offensive output for that entire division series yeah. and, and, and what's happened over the last month which didn't in the alds is that a couple other players stepped up which was nice like right. greg allen at his street mm-hmm. Melky Cabrera, what the hell is going on there? <laughs> He's a great hitter all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> but there's other players stepping up now. So I don't know if we just hope that happens all the way to the World Series or they can be a lot better. It is worse. I, so I looked it up just to see because everybody's been saying that Jose um, Ramirez especially is getting a lot less fastballs. So I looked just to check. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past two weeks when he's been struggling the most, I'd say. I, I could have looked at in August, I guess, but I just looked at this far. Um, 45.5% fastballs. Um, Lindor is 49.8%. Compare that to Jose Ramirez in the in the first half when arguably he was amazing, right? Yeah, fifty point two percent, and then Lindor was fifty three point nine. Is that enough? Like they're each seeing like five percent fewer fastballs. I guess that's not nothing, but that's. I mean, we that's we one out of every least, twenty is a curveball instead. I turn I turn that little nugget into an entire article constantly. So to me, yeah, it's probably enough. And are, is 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 one little percentage point or you know three or four percentage points enough to warrant a massive drop off? What well, like I just said before, the margins of error can be can be huge. Um, I mean, if I see a pitcher throw four or five percent less fastballs, you know, over the course of or the, over the course of a game for a starter, that's five less fastballs, which in that case means there's five more pitches of a different style, obviously. Um, which could mean, I mean, and again, five five pitches can make or break an entire start. Uh, how many pitches? I don't know. I will, I, offhand, I'm not sure how many pitches these guys have seen, but maybe. 
I guess I, I'm just I'm just looking at both their numbers over the last you know month. Ramirez is Babbitt is two forty one. Lindor's is a little more unsettlingly two eighty seven. So um, Ramirez has been a little bit unlucky too. But I don't think that they're are they are they bad breaking ball hitters? I thought they both the Indians are one of the best like slider hitting teams in baseball. I thought according to Fangraphs. Um, yeah, and it's weird this wouldn't have come up like while they were destroying the league earlier. I don't know why it just started happening. I mean, I guess they've started. Everybody started shifting on Ramirez more, which yeah. is weird that multiple teams have done it. But I don't know that that means he all of a sudden is a pole hitter who can only hit fastballs. Um, I will say I do want him to get back to the Jose Ramirez that hit the ball over the field instead of just trying to hit Dinger. But he's a less I don't effective know if it's a player in that. Thing, in, in that, that like, he's just he's a less of, uh, effective offensive player. That style, like, this style that we see now. The the pull the pull heavy hitter is the you know he's he's one of the best hitters in baseball. Whereas a year or two ago when he was definitely spraying the ball a little around a little more, he was merely very very good, right? So that's a good point. I don't know. Um, I mean, according to I, I just checked real quick. According to uh, pitch value, Ramirez still hits everything very well. He just crushes fast. But you know, any good hitter can crush his fastballs. And in fact, Lindor is one of the better slider hitting players. Uh, I think in baseball, his change his ability to hit changeups is is a plus thirteen point four runs on changeups this year, which is pretty good. I don't know, I just, this is a lot like our Jason Kipnis uh, Cody Allen discussion last week. We don't know; they're just I, I, <laughs> they're just bad for a bit. I, I, <laughs> They'll get better, and that's, the, and that's the irritating, weird, funny thing is, yeah, you know, maybe they're just maybe they're just better. And you know what, Ramirez is the thirtieth best hitter in baseball against sliders. Um, and I think, uh, change ups. Francisco Lindor is the best hitting, he's the best hitter against change ups according to pitch weights in all of baseball. So, again, everything is, everything is relative. Maybe that 5% change means that their approach changes just enough where they're a little bit off base. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're, they're expecting something and they're not swinging in that case. And, you know, they were, they are swinging and it's a change up instead of a fastball. So it's a, Maybe it's not even not a home run, but it's just a you know a weak flare to to right that ends up dropping in for a hit instead. Um, yeah, just a weird thing. Just, again, just a weird thing. Welcome to baseball. <laughs> I hate these weird things. Sometimes they're fun. That's what baseball. Is. Not no, when it's your right. team being bad. Lindor That's is like not the, fun. It, <clears throat> it's Lindor fun when Melky Cabrera is something amazing. Lindor is one of the best breaking ball hitters in baseball. Actually, one of the best non hit non fastball hitting. Play- he was really good at hitting non-fastballs, it turns out. It's Mike Trapp. Jesus Christ. Weird. I thought he was bad at everything. Everything positive. <laughs> Ooh, baby. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary. Not so every fact. Monday, we ask everybody on Facebook and Twitter for your questions, what you want to know about the Indians. Um, I guess it's just general baseball we open it to. I just asked a general question. But it's mostly Indians for some odd reason. It's almost like we're on Indians blog. I don't know. Um, so at Mike J. Schaefer. He wants to know, will the Indians ever win again? Hmm. <laughs> so let's turn this into another another little scenario here. Let's assume the Indians just absolutely tank. Maybe not never win a game, never win again, but I mean, lose the division. The, who who goes at that point? <laughs> like, if, if this is it, Wait. if this is oh, God. an impending <laughs> awful collapse, Mario Kart is blamed, there's chicken and beer in the clubhouse. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot of people are going to go down, right? This is not going to be good. The Indians win, never win another game again. The franchise gets moved. This is nightmare scenario. Oh, it doesn't at that point it doesn't matter because they're not the Indians anymore. So we have to change the name of the blog <laughs> first of all. Let's go try to make any sense when they're the <laughs> Decatur Devils. The can be the Devils. It's <laughs> Decatur. The only place they can go is Decatur. Yeah, right no, Montreal, where else would they go, Matt? I can't think of another town. Charlotte. That's literally it. Cleveland or Decatur. That's the only two places. We got the. Sh- they can be the Hornets. Be- Screw the other the Hornets. Charlotte Knights. There's already a team there named the Knights. Just take their name. Um, <laughs> it's not a minor league team. It is. It's a White Sox minor. I league. know that from playing MLB the show, and to take your line from playing MLB the show. All the White Sox minor, minor league teams, league by the way, are named after like medieval lords. <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense. The Barons. And they have the Knights. Oh, really? Yeah, well, at least those two. Oh, no, I love that. I want more theming in the minor right? leagues. Are you Everything kidding? should be more connected like that. Like, I, that's why. I, oh, that'd be so right. Cool. I don't know. I, I, I think the uh, Indians because you have the Clippers, which is a boat, then the Akron, I don't know, sailboats, and <laughs> <laughs> maybe just forms of transportation. Rubber duck kind of works. They have like the tread in the logo. 
We're getting close there. I guess arrows well, was know, closer because it's like rubber, rubber ducks like a clipper float on water. Okay, so actually that's oh, so it's just things that float on water. Well, you know, it's, it's, yeah, ocean going vessels. Basically. <laughs> the Lynchburg inner tubes. Yeah, like in the, in the, in the <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, the twins have like the Mahoning th- Valley dead bodies. Uh, they only float sometimes. <laughs> The twins have a bunch of twins na- teams named the Twins. The Phillies had the R Phils for a while. The Reading R Phils. Now they're a different team, though. It's too bad. Oh, that's stupid. The, Having your minor league team be your name is just yeah, lame the, and the, dumb. The Mets had the B Mets, which is stupid because they were in Binghamton or something. Wait, were they actually called the B Mets? Yeah. I thought that was just the nickname. I don't know. I, I, I worked for the Eastern League and they called them the B Mets on broadcast, so I don't know. <laughs> No, I think it was just Binghamton Mets, as they. Yeah, well, I yeah. hope to God that's what it well, was. I mean, Redding, but now they're the Rumble Ponies, yeah, so right. they've improved. And then the, the Reading R Phillies. I don't know what they are now. Reading <laughs> Phillies. How do you spell Phillies? I think it's just the Reading Phillies, right? I told uh, a friend of mine about it. The, they're still the Redding, Redding Fighting Phillies. I, I was, I was mentioning, mentioning to uh, someone I knew uh, yesterday how I knew someone who worked in the, in the Philadelphia Phillies organization. She's not a big baseball fan. And she's just like. That's a very creative name. I was like, it is. It really is. <laughs> the Cleveland Clevelanders. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. More people do. <laughs> um, so at John Cock 56. Wait, we didn't answer that he question, wants to know. Did, we? did we? I don't know. What, hap- what happens if, it's, if they never win again? <laughs> they don't exist anymore. We're at that point. They're gone. <laughs> like, All right. You, how long do you keep a team around before if they never win a game? Like multiple seasons? Question. How long could a team exist without winning? Because profit sharing does exist. So conceivably, if the team owned its stadium, which the Indians do, I believe. Yeah, because Jacobs built it. And as, all they would have to do is pay guys the major league minimum, which is what they'd have to do because they'd have a bunch of not even quad A players. It's double A players. They, I think they could still conceivably exist, is what I'm saying to you, and never win again. How long until riots? Well, or... well, I, see, that's the thing. I think it would be even worse than riots. It would be indifference, and just no one would show up at all ever. It would be like that one game they had up in uh, Baltimore two or three years ago when they had all those riots, and just no one in the stands constantly. Um, but again, like if the if the owner is okay with making. Eighty thousand dollars a year in profit after he pays everyone. <laughs> He's just like, I don't care. I live in a small, co- I live in a small loft down the street, or I live in. Yeah, because at first you would care. get everybody saying that he's doing it just to make money, but then when it gets to the point where nobody's showing up, like, why is he doing this? Because <laughs> again, if the profit sharing is big enough, that I mean, it would really piss yeah. off the other owners. <laughs> I think that would get in the way after a while. I think the team would be yeah. forced to win eventually. To answer the question. I don't think there's any way a team could never win again and continue to exist. I think they could do it, but I think outside forces would influence it. What a stupid answer. Maybe there's also a like, go ahead. <laughs> there's also like a bell curve there where at some point you get so bad where you're a novelty and then attendance goes back up. Right. Exactly. Right. Or, or you, cause the indifference is somewhere in the middle. And also like teams from around, like, you know, you, you, I'm sure you've read article. Uh, there, there was that uh, New York times writer who, for less than a cost of a, of a seat behind uh, home plate at Yankee Stadium, he uh, flew to Kansas City to see a Yankees game. Sat behind home plate, ate uh, at a, ate at the best restaurant in town, stayed in the best uh, hotel in town, and flew back for less than the cost of a seat. So you'd have people doing that. So all of a sudden, it becomes like a a destination thing. I mean, you have teams coming in. You know, they're already penciling the win in. So everyone else loves you, obviously. Uh, the Tigers, there'd be tons of Tigers fans there. Uh, you know, Reds fans would, would be coming up. That would become a destination. Now you think about it. And see, then the owner gets all the money. It's the long con. See, it's it's genius. He gets really broke for a couple years. By the time he's year three of like Owen one sixty two, it's the novelty, and then he starts making. It's money. like a weird twist to the plan of the of the <laughs> evil owner in uh in Major League. We want to be so bad. For what? To be bad. No reason, really. I just want to stink just to see what's up. <laughs> we don't want to move. We just, we just want to see how it yeah. works. <laughs> so at John Cock 56 he wants to know, who would you rather see, Melky or Yandi, and why? I'm going to be real honest with you, Merritt. I'm slightly drifting well, towards Melky at this point. It's just sad. Forever, all right. <laughs> 
how long does he have to be good before we just kind of accept it and let him be the right I mean, fielder? Uh, realistically, obviously, it, the, at this point, the goal is to win a World Series, then and he's being more effective offensively and hitting the ball in the air at all. They're both going to be bad right fielders. We just I want Yandy because you know hope and potential and <laughs> you know deep missiles hit into the wall so that the outfielder can't dig it out. Biceps. You know and. And the biceps, obviously. <laughs> Whereas Bucky Cabrera looks like a milkman. Like he just has the physique of a milkman. Not even the... Which isn't mean, I don't think. Milkmen are probably relatively strong, carrying all that milk all day. Um, oh, he's like all upper body. He's he's very much like a milkman. You, it's really right, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, my answer is Yandi because I want it. But, uh, you know, I mean, right now, if... if, if hey, if... if um, Milky Cabrera has been hitting like this, then fuck it. Who cares? I'm, I'm all the way on the milk train, milk bus, milk wagon. Yeah. It was milk transported, <laughs> Matt. Uh, milk van? Milk van? Milk, milk, milk truck? truck? Milk, milk truck. truck. That's a thing people say. There you go. Milk wagon. No, I already said milk oh, wagon. Milk. No one says milk wagon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I said it and it felt weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's There was a point where it was like a couple games where it was, it just seemed unfortunate that he's getting himself playing time. But now it's like it's he's hitting really well, and with your inability to watch Major League Baseball, you probably didn't watch Monday night's game, did you? Uh, Tonight's no. Also, I was because um, <laughs> uh, John Wayne films, but that's a different thing altogether. Red Dead Redemption Two <laughs> comes out next month, and I'm getting ready for it by watching every <laughs> cowboy movie I can. This is important. <laughs> so, in the less important baseball game that happened, um, so this is really interesting to talk about. Anyway, just the fact that it happened. Um, so it was bottom of the ninth. Uh, bases were loaded. I think the Indians were down by four, so he used the tying run at the plate. Um, there's one out, and he put Yandy Diaz in. Now, as a purely baseball move, Tito Francona pinched hit the guy who can only hit ground balls mm-hmm. in a double play will kill you scenario. Um, okay. We'll get to spoiler alert what happened in a minute. Um, but Yandy Diaz fouled off a ball like a million miles an hour. Oh, yeah. um, but I think the fact that he, he put him in is, first of all, that's the most – get out there and show me what you've got kind of move I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> how much more? Cause I think he had, um, it was, it was Yonder Alonzo yeah, on deck. So, so it's not like he was having, right. sending a terrible hitter out. Well, I mean, it was it a but, platoon um, thing too. Of who was pitching at that time? I don't remember. I think it, I, I, must have been a I think it was a righty though. So it wasn't even interesting. Yandy's a righty. So it wasn't even like a, a platoon advantage. Interesting. Um, but by the way, he hit a ball 108 miles an hour, right to the second baseman. Oh, yeah. So, so I mean, it didn't go well. <laughs> But but I love the fact that Tito did that and put him in, um, and at least giving him a shot there. I hope it isn't a cynical like, "Look, I did it, and I don't have to do it anymore." But I don't know. I guess at this point, I the the baseball fun fan in me wants to see Yandy Diaz, but the Indians fan who wants to win a World Series knows it's got to be Milky, especially if Lonnie Chisholm isn't coming back. I mean, he's he's their best right fielder, right? <laughs> unless you put. No, he's the, he's their best right fielder, like by a mile. No, There's nobody no, else right now. Greg Allen, unless you shift him over. No, he's the best hitting right. He's fielder the right fielder. Yeah, he's the right fielder. Like that. That's that's just the the flat fact of it all. But yeah, I did see a website tweet tweeted about that. Yes, and that's very exciting that he did that. Um, it's amazing he did it for Alonzo, though. Very interesting. Yeah, that was. The, that's why it makes me think that it was just purely. A, we don't care about. It's not. It's not a goal of winning the game. It's just a goal of get. Yandy D has a chance to really prove something, any kind of boost. So I was, um, I just wanted to see how well, uh, what's his name, uh, Cabrera has been doing, and so I went on to Baseball Reference of his game logs. You now you can click on them and highlight them and just look them in, in chunks. Anyway, okay. I highlighted the last 120 at bats, which would be the <laughs> second, uh, the, the last month basically, and I misread it as him hitting 315, 358, 674 because I just skipped over the batting average line. <laughs> In reality, he's hitting, <laughs> yeah, in reality, he's hitting 258, 315, 358 uh, over his last 130 plate appearances. So, again, he is not producing as well as, I don't know, the narrative suggests he is or as as well as he was in the beginning of the month. Because he had that little run there, um, you know, a period of, I'll call it, 75 plate appearances where he was hitting at an 836 OPS, which is nice. Um He's still not good. I mean. <laughs> and you know the worst part? He's still the best right fielder, even with that realization. Who were you going to put instead of him in right field? Right, exactly. I mean, and, and what, but again, that, that, that goes back to my, my constant refrain of why not just put Yandy Diaz there because it can't be that much worse. 
And I, I, I'm still, I, I don't know. I think at this point, only because he's not that good, talking about Cabrera, I mean, rolling the rolling the luck dice when it comes to uh, Diaz because he's just so influenced by batting average on balls in play with his ground ball tendencies. Maybe he could be, he, he could be, you know, we're talking about earlier about Donaldson, you know, getting a couple of key hits and becoming a superstar and a legend. That's, I think that's, that's purpose built for, for, for Diaz. So yeah. I guess my answer is Diaz. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joseph Hayden on Facebook. He wanted to know how does Tom, Josh Tomlin still have a job? Who knows, man. <laughs> so uh, this Josh Tomlin fella, not very good. It's yesterday. Uh, didn't he? He did. And the day before and he gave up a home run. <laughs> so great. <laughs> so in his last, I don't know. Let's just eyeball this last the seven or eight starts. He's given up four home runs. Mm-hmm. He's given up an earned run in basically every game. Oh, consistency, multiple baby. runs in almost every game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's bad. He cannot be on the playoff roster. Right? There's no way he can. How do you give him a ball anywhere in a postseason game and say, "Go get him, Tiger"? Well, I don't. All right. Well, let's play that game then, Matt. They're gonna have. I don't want to play that game. They're gonna, have eight, they're gonna have eight pitchers, right? Right. I don't want to play the game. It's so scary. So who are we thinking of? Obviously, you're gonna have Kluber, Clevenger, Bauer, Carrasco. That's four. You're going to have Brad Hand. That's five. You're going to have Andrew Miller. That's six. Um, I mean, do we pencil Adam Simber in? Right? Yeah, you're right. Then you have Adam Simber in. That's seven. Dan Otero. Oliver Perez. I mean, I, I haven't even said Cody Allen yet. <laughs> yeah. Do they go with more pitchers? Because that's the thing. You, you think about your, your active 25. The idea of that also is to you know have utility guys and things like that. And I agree with you were saying before, at least in the a- in the AL playoffs, you don't need that. So, do you go with nine pitchers? Maybe. Hmm. I get. I, know. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't want. Is, 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 I guess is the eighth <laughs> pitcher Cody Allen then. In which case, yeah. Oh yeah. In which I mean, case, yeah. No, there's there. there's absolutely no room for for Josh Tomlin. I think that. Um, if you know, like if Miller can't make it, then the next guy you go to would be either Tyler Olson or Oliver Perez, and then Neil Ramirez, and then Dan Otero, and then Josh Tomlin. So no, I think he's far enough yeah. down the pecking order where at this point it's just like boy, there, there's no even there's not even a chance to think about. It. He's, he he has a job because he's good at cribbage, or bad at it because <laughs> he keeps on losing to Tito, making him feel good. Yeah, and it's also worth noting at this point, um, this is last year. This was option year of that deal that looked really good when he signed it in 2016. It was two years, $5.5 million with this option. Um, but this is pretty much it for Tomlin, who's the longest tenured Indian. Um, I, don't, I don't want him to come back unless he's really, <laughs> really fixed. I mean, there's no reason to have him next year, which is sad because I still like – I like a lot of Josh Tomlin when he's on. I think he's interesting, the fact that right. – he always stays in the zone. He's like a bad Shane Bieber at this point. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was a point and where I think that's what it Shane is. Bieber was just, the everything is so accentuated. And, you know, velocity has jumped away to where your baseline control enthusiast pitcher is Shane Bieber right now. Yeah. You know, so so there you have it. And then, I mean, 2016 with Tomlin, too, is, is a ridiculously good memory. But that is a memory at this point. Um, so maybe we've seen the last of, like, postseason Indians Tomlin. I don't know if he's... Do they, I don't think they re-sign him, right? They've got a ton of these same kind of relievers who are better. He's going to be 34 next year. That's kind of sad. I wonder who – is it Michael Brantley? No, Brantley will be gone Brantley too, Brantley. so what does that matter? <laughs> yeah, so Kipnis maybe the longest tenured Indian? Kipnis or – Allen? Cody Allen, maybe. Allen was on the – it was in the bullpen. I don't know. How long has Kipnis been around? It's either Kipnis or Allen, yes. Oh. It's happened. Jason Kipnis has been on the team two. since 2011. Who was on that team? Let's see. Not Carlos Santana. He's gone. <laughs> uh, Kosuke Fukudome. It's got to be no. Uh Well, I mean, Lonnie Chisenhall. Is he gone at the end of the year, too? Yeah, Lonnie's gone. Who actually might be? Maybe Carlos Carrasco. Well, Cody Allen is, too. What are we doing? Oh, it's Carlos Carrasco. He's longer than Kipnis? Yeah, oh, I guess so, yeah. 2009. Wow. That's really how long he's been on a team. Oh yeah, Allen wouldn't even been mad at anyway. He he was twenty twelve, so but he's gone after this year too. So yes, sir, yeah, no, it's gonna look a little different. It's gonna be a lot of younger players, which is not terrible. That's all we're already guys we're used to anyway, so it's not gonna be that special or interesting. Yeah. <laughs> On that Boring note, garbage. Well, that is our podcast this week. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so I hope as we press stop recording in a few minutes here that 
that everything was a lot higher quality. Um, for anybody listening now who made it all the way to the end of the podcast, you'll notice we didn't broadcast live on Facebook anymore. We pretty much dropped that. There wasn't enough people watching. It prevented us from using this nice Zencaster, which, fingers crossed, is going to be really high quality. Um, Facebook's so the devil. Fun, so. It is basically the devil that nobody uses. It's great. Um, the next week's our 100th episode. We have nothing planned for it, but it's the 100th episode. That's cool. I think it's probably our 20th or so together, Merritt. Maybe a few less. Maybe. I have no idea. I don't know. Something like that. But, Indians but had, 100th episode of this podcast. Indians had nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven got pitchers on their playoff roster last year. Eleven pitchers? Yeah. Well, that's, that's Terry Francona. He likes his pitchers. Show that's, enough that's does. Fun. Damn. <laughs> All right, Merritt. Talk to you next yeah, week. Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>